गुड डे आई एम डॉक्टर संजय गर्ग कंसल्टेंट यूरोलॉजिस्ट इन मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल गाजियाबाद सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट किडनी स्टोन डिजीज एज वी ऑल नो डेट वी आर लिविंग इन सब हिमालयन जोन नॉर्दर्न जोन ऑफ इंडिया सो दिस इज अ जोन वेयर स्टोन फॉर्मेशन इज वेरी फ्रिक्वेंट वी लिव इन एनवायरमेंट विच इज स्टोन स्टोन फॉर्मेशन इज सीन फ्रिक्वेंटली वट आर द कॉजेज ऑफ स्टोन फॉर्मेशन हेयर इट कैन बी मल्टीपल फैक्टर्स एनवायरमेंटल फैक्टर्स फैमिली फैक्टर्स फैमिली फैक्टर्स मीन्स समटाइम्स दिस स्टोन इज रन इन फैमिलीज इफ पेरेंट्स फादर मदर एंड ब्रदर और सिस्टर्स आर हैविंग स्टोन डिजीज देन दे आर समटाइम्स हाई चांसेस डेट अ पर्सन विल हैव किडनी स्टोन डिजीज डाइटरी फैक्टर्स दिस प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल समटाइम्स आवर लाइफ स्टाइल इज सच डेट वी डोंट ड्रिंक वाटर वी इंजेस्ट टू मच ऑफ फूड विच कंटेन हाई अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीडेट्स or certain preservatives are there which are detrimental for our uh, uh, kidney or forms stones so in all we can say that it is multifactorial and there is not a single factor that we can say that this is the cause of stone formation now what our kidney does kidney works like a filter it filters our blood it filters all the waste materials that enters into the blood blood enters into the kidney there are filtration units and finally urine formation is there in between when the things are filtered if there is a super saturation level of certain things like calcium oxalate phosphate then these things accumulate in the kidney whereas if there is less amount of inhibitors what are the inhibitors like magnesium sorry uh, citrate uh, especially citrate this works as a uh, inhibitor of stone formation if inhibitors are less aggregators are more then there are high chances of stone formation which occurs in the kidney it starts as a small nidus it uh, just a small dot of calcium accumulation thereafter it grows if the saturation level is high then this calcium formation occurs and stone size grows that one fine day uh, from the tip of the papilla which is a structure in the kidney it falls into the unit where urine uh, urine accumulation is there then that size increases symptoms occurs when either there is an obstruction or infection kidney stone falls into the ureter ureter is a tube which connects the kidney to the bladder then there is an obstruction this obstruction causes kidney to uh, cry basically it cries it tries to push that stone but it is unable to then it cries and we perceive it as a pain this is which is the most common symptom kidney stone uh, we perceive a pain and it can be associated with for uh, with uh, blood in urine or fever sometimes with vomiting all the symptoms may not be present in a particular patient but the most common symptom is pain sometimes there are silent stones which are more dangerous because if the stone is obstructing and it is not uh, causing any pain or any other symptom then it can gradually cause uh, kidneys to function less and even lead to damage of the kidneys so what should we do we should first of all if there is a pain or if there is some symptoms and then uh, linking to this kidney stone we should especially go to a doctor and consult and further get our self investigated what are the investigations that we can do first of all basic investigation includes urine examination blood examination and ultrasound ultrasound is the preliminary investigation in which we can continue uh, we can come to know about condition of the kidney presence of stone if there is some infection some swelling on the kidney and thereafter if there is any doubt that stones are present then we should go for some special investigation what are those like ct scan ct scan nearly tells it uh, nearly more than 99% cases we come to know that what is the like number presence of the stone size of the stone location of the stone and sometimes we can also know that how hard the stone is so thereafter we can plan our treatment now Or what are the treatment modalities? Treatment modalities are uh, medical as well as surgical. Medical treatment uh, means when the kidney stones are present either in the kidney or they are very small in size, causing uh, they are not causing obstruction or infection. Then we can definitely go for medical treatment. And in medical treatment, certain drugs are there which helps us for the elimination of the stone and or stone formation that can decrease the co- uh, cause of stone formation. whereas if the stone is uh, stuck up in the ureter causing infection causing obstruction then we have to get it removed normally uh, we can wait for certain days like from 7 to 10 days if the stone size is small say less than 5 mm then we can give certain medication that helps us to dilate the ureter 
kidney function itself there are certain pacemakers in the kidney which flushes the urine so stone passes along that urine with the help of our medicines so which is only suitable to a certain extent in small stones that too if it's, uh, it is not complete obstruction and given for a certain period of time so along with that we also give certain pain killers obviously to alleviate the pain that pain killer should be kidney friendly because analgesic we know that can cause kidney damage so we should not prescribe or we should not take those by analgesic which are not kidney friendly number 3 uh, if stone is stuck up causing infection causing severe obstruction then we should not wait whether the size is small or large then we have to go for the removal of the stone normally uh, with the advent of uh, newer technologies now we have uh, you can say uh, minimally invasive surgeries or very very less invasive so either we can go approach from retrograde that is down blow from the urinary tract or from our back side so when we uh, go from down blow we are the investigator the operation is called as ureteroscopy or rirs retrograde intrauterine surgery ureteroscopy is done for the stone which is stuck up in the kid, uh, in the ureter whereas if the stone is in the kidney they are not of very big size then we can approach from down below from the ureter go inside the kidney fulgurate it with laser break it with laser and take it out this technique is called rirs retrograde intrauterine surgery if the stone size is large then we have to approach it from our back side from the flanks in that we have to puncture the kidney and go directly to the stone break it into pieces and take it out this technique is called as pcnl there are many other modalities like uh, extra corporeal shockwave lithotripsy eswl but nowadays primarily either we go with urs rirs or uh, pcnl so apart from this now we should know what should we do there are certain facts and myth which are commonly prevalent in our society what should we eat what should we not eat which is nowadays even every other person uh, becomes a doctor and tells us that don't take this don't take, uh, take that then i like to clear certain things especially in uh, diet number one medicine number one thing that we should remember is water intake our water intake should be adequate and during the uh, period of pain we should not over hydrate ourselves we should take water as our body requires it so when uh, in uh, when we are not in pain but to prevent the stone regular water intake that is nearly approximately uh, 8 to 10 liters uh, 8 to 10 glasses of water approximately 2 to 2.5 liters of uh, water per day is required that too in divided intervals we should regularly take water we should take one glass of water every hour so this water will flush the kidney it won't allow uh, certain sediments like it won't uh, allow calcium or a certain other things to super to go to super saturated level and we won't uh, be forming the stones this is the number one medicine which everyone can take and helps us to prevent the stone there are certain foods which are uh, i would say uh, can uh, cause stone formation especially uh, minerals in which i would say uh, sodium sodium like namak jo uh, so common salt that we take which is high in sodium that we should uh, our excess salt should be avoided it should be taken when uh, whatever it is present in our vegetables or uh, dal etc what we are eating but we should not take it sprinkle it means table salt should be avoided number 1 number 2 we should not have uh, food which have which are high in preservatives or packed food like uh, or you can say junk food like pizza burger uh, certain noodles and other they are high in uh, salt and oxalate content we should avoid those foods if we are vegetarian then it's okay but if non veg then we should try to avoid red meat in dry fruits we should try to curdle down the intake of cashew nuts kaju kha sakte hain but we have to if we are eating too much of it then we have to curdle it down in uh, fruits mainly uh, i would say chiku and angur like grapes should be taken in a moderate amount we should not uh, too over indulge in these two foods otherwise other foods can be taken now coming to the most important thing that is the calcium intake or uh, food which are rich in calcium like milk products cheese then these things should be taken should not be avoided and it should be taken adequate amount because this is very important for the growth of our body especially for ladies uh, for females because low calcium intake can cause uh, obviously the weakening of bones and other things calcium what we ingest does not directly go to the kidney and deposit over there 
in only 5% cases high intake of calcium causes hyper accumulation of calcium in the kidneys so in 95% cases we should not avoid it and how to know about those 5% cases in recurrent stone formers the, like those persons who are forming stones again again we specifically go for certain investigation certain test then we come to know that this person if he takes calcium more more ingestion of calcium that can go into the kidney and cause harm so that is only uh, seen after certain investigation otherwise we should take normal amount of calcium that is required for the body now most important other thing is intake of green vegetables or vegetables which are vegetable fruits which contain nuts nuts or beech i would say normally uh, oxalates these rich uh, the green vegetables they contain oxalates and as we know that most commonly our stone is consumed of calcium oxalate so common myth is that avoid these vegetables we should not we should take it but in moderation there should not be over indulgence why because it 80% of oxalates they are formed inside our body inside our liver only 20% cases if high intake of oxalate is present that can go and cause accumulation of oxalates in the body so we should not directly avoid it we should take it but not too frequently same with the uh, uh, with the vegetables or fruits which contain uh, beech uh, seeds most important thing which is commonly practiced i have seen it and i always hear that everyone tells that if stone is present or stone is obstructed or obstructing then drink alcohol or beer there is vice versa it is a common myth we should not take beer why because beer contains high amount of oxalates if a person is regularly consuming beer then instead of uh, uh, stone dissolution it will increase stone formation the only thing that happens when we a person takes alcohol or beer is that there is lot more amount of urine formation is there which is uh, not good so my advice is totally to avoid beer and as far as other things are concerned we should see uh, like we can have regular intake of uh, calcium products we should avoid red meat we should avoid uh, cashew nut not avoid taken uh, uh, moderate amount and other fruits like uh, chiku and angur should be taken in uh, lesser quantity otherwise we can have normal healthy diet if we are going to curtail our diet then it has got to have detrimental effects on our body because there will be deficiency of certain minerals other things and most important thing is water intake water intake should be adequate approximately 2 to 2.5 liters this can increase in certain cases when there is uh, uh, like in summers or in conditions when we uh, there is uh, some dehydration dehydration is there then we have to increase the water intake otherwise around 2.5 liters is sufficient so this is the i would say the medicine which help us in prevention of stone formation and if somehow stone formation is there and it causes uh, obstruction pain then we have to consult a urologist for the proper management thank you so now uh, we'll be answering the questions from the audience yeah some uh, questions which is generally asked okay so as uh, someone is asking function of the kidney as i mentioned function of the kidney is to is for filtration it filters all the waste that are found in our body specifically like uh, urea certain minerals are there excess of amount of sodium so these are the waste material which should not be kept inside the kidney or inside the body that uh, filtered by the kidney kidney stones are there most commonly calcium oxalate stones in india nearly more than 95% cases of calcium oxalate monohydrate or dihydrate stone whereas certain other stones are also there uric acid stones are there uh, calcium uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate so most most commonly calcium oxalate stones are there and how is it diagnosed as i mentioned earlier when a person is having pain which is present in the flank which is radiating down to the uh, groin area or the urinary passage then we should suspect that a person is having kidney stone for which we have to further investigate this pain can be associated with blood in urine fever or vomiting how long does it take for a person to recover from kidney stone normally if a stone is smaller in size it is causing obstruction we can uh, and it is on investigation we find that it is not totally obstructing then we can give a trial period with the medication for around 10 days but if the size of the stone is bigger 
bigger than 5 mm or more so than that then we should not go for conservative or the medical treatment we should go for removal of stone with the help of the uh, newer methods like rotoscopy or rirs and sometimes pcnn do kidney stone dissolve naturally certain stones which are i would say softer stone like having more uric acid content in them so they can be dissolved but for that we have, we should know that this stone is uh, most of the uh, content is uh, uric acid we can have ct scan in ct scan there is a certain parameters hounsfield unit is there if the hounsfield unit of stone is less like 200 hu then those stone can be dissolved but for that matter you have to uh, monitor the kidney uh, P, uh, like ph in the urine so we have to give certain medication that period is long maybe 3 to 6 months but if the stone is obstructing or associated with infection we should not go for this dissolution therapy yeah role of stone analysis uh, definitely when we have uh, captured the stone or we have the stone we can go for a stone analysis stone normally we find that calcium oxalate monohydrate or dihydrate stones are present whereas <coughs> if stone analysis show that it contains high amount of urates then we can definitely uh, cut down on certain uh, food that contains high amount of urate so stone analysis help us to know what is the exact constituent and does our diet will help in uh, restricting that stone formation so we should go for stone analysis but for uh, for uh, uh, getting the perfect picture there are certain tests which are performed when the patient is uh, pain free or stone free those are few uh, uh, blood parameters getting uh, calcium mag uh, calcium magnesium uh, creatinine tested in uh, blood uric acid tested in blood then special hormone which is called as parathyroid hormone whereas there is special analysis of urine which is called as 24 uh, 24 hours urine analysis for kidney stone disease we again collect urine sample for 24 hours check for certain parameters as i mentioned like calcium oxalate magnesium phosphate urates these are the certain parameters we come to know what is the constituent which is causing super saturation in urine so these are the tests which are performed this gives us the complete picture and helps us in uh, curtailing down the lifestyle or uh, the dietary factors so thank you